especially when scientists talk about deadlines. Dr. Abamchikov, where do you plan to put your groundbreaking new analysis method into practice? Are you in touch with the Metropolitan Museum? As the whole project would never have got off the ground without the support of the Russian government, we will of course start here at the State Hermitage Museum in Petersburg. I'm listening. It's just as we feared. How much time do we have? Little. Too little. Can we stop him? No, not anymore. Others will come, but not at once. That could be enough for us. All right. But we must not draw attention to ourselves. I understand. An unhappy coincidence. It must look like an accident. Yes. The sea would be suitable. Be careful and remember. Those who are without doubt will be rewarded. sad story has got its beginning, its time and place, its tragic characters and its puppet masters. Our story began with a phone call. Got one new message. Austin Kovic here. Call me immediately. I repeat, immediately. As soon as you get this message. And Svetlova, get ready to give me a clever explanation for why your cell phone is off all the time. Use your cell phone so that we don't have to go through the identification procedure. Hmm. Sergei Vasily Ostankovic, Colonel of Russian Militia. My former boss at Department 12, Art Forgery and Theft, before I transferred to Interpol. Certainly a man with no sense of humor. Quite clearly in top form again. And the fact he's getting in touch with me here in Lyon doesn't imply anything good. I really have to find my cell phone and call Ostankovic immediately. An empty CD cover. Hmm. I wonder what I can use it for. The album Muriel lent me. 
I have to give it back to Muriel, or I'll have one less friend. That means none. The cover and the CDs inside it. CD. A permanent pen can always be put to use. From the scene near DeWitt Clinton Park, the man was identified as Anatoly Abramchikov, a Russian scientist lecturing at a scientific symposium in New York. Police are investigating the case, but so far no signs of violence have been found. In the next item, we'll be talking to Professor Yuli Yachenkov, great work friend and colleague of Anatoly Abramchikov's. He'll be on the line from Moscow. Oh, my Lord, Abramchikov. That Abramchikov dead. I talked to him a few times when I was in Petersburg. He was going to lecture here on his new analysis method in two weeks. This is a really bad day. The charger will come in handy. These days I charge the phone more frequently than I use it to make calls. The battery is finished. A light switch. These things are used to switch lights on and off. Some private notes and newspaper articles. Well, this was a good one. Van Klept was a broker in forgeries. That's where my cell phone is. My cell phone. Sadly, only with a few contacts saved. Ah, doesn't matter anyhow. Most people I have to contact are colleagues at work, and I can reach them over the office phone line. And of course, my cell phone is flat again. Oh, damn it. The battery is really no good. How am I to work without a proper phone? Leon, my current residence. I haven't seen it at all yet. Most of my time is eaten up by work. And to make things worse, Ostankovich calls. Remy. He jokes all the time. Damien Neville. I can't remember him or his colleague Remy ever being in a bad mood. Hi, long time no see, Damien. Have you been on holiday? Nothing escapes you. I was on the Canary Islands for a week. Very touristy, but uh, at least it was warm. <laughs> I would go again right now. Uh, I was wondering, do you happen to know Muriel? Petite, dark-haired. She works here at the telephone exchange. I, uh, I haven't even noticed anyone like that here. Hold on. Doesn't she mean the one who comes here for her cigarette break? Come on. She looks totally different. Why are you asking, anyway? She went on holiday at the same time you did, and she was in the Canary Islands as well. She wouldn't tell me who she was going with, so I was thinking that maybe, by pure coincidence, you met there? No. I can't remember her. I haven't seen her around. Well, how could you, when you say that you don't even know what she looks like? Well, uh, Remy. Have the Germans arrived? Excuse me, miss, but uh, we are expecting a delegation from Bonn. Germans? 
Are they really supposed to come today? Uh, yeah, yeah, yes, of course. Uh, I'll explain it to you straight away. So, uh, chatting about the girl working at the telephone exchange has to wait. I am sorry. Sure, Damien. Of course. Good morning. I should call Ostankovich immediately. He makes people's lives unpleasant when things don't go his way. Good. We'll see what that terrible battery can hold. Well, the phone could be at least partially charged now. The battery is the same piece of junk as before, but it might just last a few phone calls. have time on your hands in Leon. Why let the ringing of a cell phone bother you, right? The guys in the technical department of Interpol, especially Jennings, are unfortunately unable to repair my cell phone at the moment. Normally I'm accessible all the time, of course. What happened? Everything I tell you now is strictly confidential. It stays between you and me. No colleagues, no departmental memos, no recordings, nothing. Do we understand each other? Well, if it's nothing illegal... Don't make me angry, Svetlova. This matter is too serious. Last night, the security system in the St. Petersburg State Hermitage Museum was out of order for several minutes. Fortunately, the outer perimeter remained functional and its cameras didn't record anything unusual. That's a nuisance. But if nobody entered the museum, then nothing could be taken either, could it? I personally examined the place. My initial impression was that nothing significant was missing. But I've got a feeling that something is. No one could give me a good explanation as to how both the main and backup security circuits stopped working at the same time. If everything is in its place, then it could only mean something's been exchanged for a fake. However, there is nothing on the outer cameras, so the culprit and what he stole would have to still be in the museum. How about a thorough search of the place? Are you mad? Do you understand what a scandal it would be? A week after they were praising me in the press for my fine work, front page in our most popular daily, and with me about to be awarded the Medal of Honor. No, we must keep it secret. We must find out whether something has really happened without an official investigation. That means I want to have Max Durand here in St. Petersburg as soon as possible. But how can he help you there? If you can't even support him officially, he won't be able to do anything. Listen to me closely. Sure, you're working for Interpol now and no longer for Department 12. So I'm no longer your superior. But I still have enough influence to have you lose your job. You better not forget the interests of your motherland take all precedence. Therefore, be so kind and don't question my decision. Get your end for me. And if he's hesitant, tell him that I have his file on my table. I can still change my mind about our mutual cooperation. Remind him I could have him arrested and locked up for a very long time. Not to mention that sometimes terrible accidents can happen in prison. Damn the battery's flat. Now of all times. I wonder how they would like it at the technical department when I whack their heads with that junk of a battery. God knows when I send the application for a new one. Damn it.
Ostankovich will go ballistic if I don't get Max. Without a working cell phone, I must try to contact him from my office. It seems I'm standing in for Pierre again. I should get it done as soon as possible, or the boss will go wild. Max has cancelled more meetings than I can count. Right now he's busy working for the University of Toulouse. Next time it might be Paris.
So Max is somewhere at the university in Toulouse and his cell phone is off. Great. And I need to speak with him as soon as possible. That sounds like a perfect job for my friend Muriel working at the switchboard. And that's exactly why she works there. Telephone exchange, how can I help you? Hi, Muriel. This is Lara. Have you got a minute? Sure. It's busy today, but of course I'm here for my friends. Anything new? Mm, not much. Look, I need something. Could you get me through to someone? That's what I'm here for. <laughs> but it isn't one of us. Also, it's not an official matter. It's Max Giron, a friend of mine. He is lecturing at the Toulouse University at the moment. Typical. Of course, when I want something from you, you just ignore me. You think I'd forget my best friend? I've got the CD with me. You know what? I'll send someone to you with it. Lara, you never change. That's what you said last time. I'm sorry, I have to go. Someone has just come in. Technical department, Jennings speaking. Svetlova, SWOA. I need a new cell phone battery. Well, if it goes that flat, try to survive a few more days. Some new phones should be arriving shortly. It doesn't go flat quickly. It doesn't work at all. How am I to do anything with a phone that's no good? Do you know how much I have on my plate right now? And you're bothering me about a battery for your phone? Fine. But if somebody can't find me when they need me and something goes wrong, I'll make sure the department knows whose fault it is. Do we understand each other? Okay, then. Just stay calm. If it's really that urgent, I'll get it to you as soon as possible. I'm just completing the issue slip now. We don't have to argue or send complaints, do we? Look, I just have to do some urgent work for your friend Pierre in the lab. If the new battery isn't on my desk by the time I'm finished, I'll immediately lodge a complaint. Goodbye. A short review of a book written by my ex-boyfriend. I don't know why I haven't thrown it away. Which, according to Charlotte Renier, the head of the art theft department, were the result of strenuous effort of her subordinates and herself. <laughs> that part always makes me laugh. I worked on that case alone. A journalist approached Muriel in the street and asked her what she thought about adding new member states to the European Union, her response was not exactly breathtaking. It hangs here just to make her happy. This one is about a theft in Madrid. I could have gotten the paintings back if I hadn't made one stupid mistake. I put it up here to remind me not to do that again. Interpol spokeswoman announced a week ago that the paintings recovered, but it now looks like she was mistaken. There has been no response to our recent inquiries. I enjoy success. But remembering mistakes and not repeating them is more important to me. And this was one of my bigger mistakes. This is a description of a successful operation. Paintings worth almost three million dollars were recovered and three wise guys are awaiting trial. I mustn't forget Muriel's CD. A dull report assessing work effectiveness in our department. Renier insists that everybody reads them regularly.
but what's that? Someone's finally coming to do Monsieur Bouillet's work, but it's just not him. He asked me to help as a friend. That's how things are in life. But you wouldn't understand that, Demer. You'd have to have friends first. Friends? All oh, right. Uh, you mean those people who keep telling you things you don't care about and then make you do their work? No, I really don't have friends. Oh, God, how could I have missed so much all my life? Pierre's work, which he tossed at me. Not for the first time, and certainly it won't be the last. Our new chromatograph. I hope it lasts longer than that wreck we had before. Now I've got everything I need. Let's get the job done. The job which Pierre was to do, of course, and which, as usual, I have to do. So many mistakes. I should tell Pierre. Well, I'd better start all over again. So many mistakes. I should tell Pierre. Right, this should be enough. It's obviously a fake, perhaps even a joke. I should write Pierre the email to let him know it's done.
Damien, I need a favor from you. Of course, Miss Svedlova. I've got a CD here for my friend Muriel from the telephone exchange. I think you know who I mean. Could you give it to her the next time you see her? Well, I finish work before she does. Something tells me you might meet later, after work. No, no. Someone's hiding something from old friends. But, Rene, don't be foolish. Miss Fedlova, if you're hinting that uh, Muriel and I, you know how such things are viewed at work. Relationships between co workers are frowned upon. I'm not hinting at anything, but it's a small world. Perhaps you'll meet by chance. Oh, <laughs> that'd be a real coincidence, wouldn't it? Well, theoretically, it's possible. If I happen to see her, I'll pass it on to her. Thanks, Damien. See you, Remy. Here's the new battery for your phone. Keep the old one if you like. Signed by Jennings. See? Where there's a will, there's a way. A cell phone battery. I can't believe it turned up. The phone is totally dead now. I really can't make phone calls from it. Cell phone battery. The phone is totally dead now. I really can't make phone calls from it. Seems I should check my email inbox. There's no need to write to him again. All I wanted was a translation from Portuguese, but I managed without him. Hi, I'm lecturing right now. If you need something, leave a message for me. Thanks, Max. That's not good. I have no choice but to get the number of the university where Max is lecturing. Telephone exchange, how can I help you? Hi, this is Lara. I left a CD with someone you might meet at work. By sheer chance. You are a terrible snoop. How did you find out? I've got eyes, Muriel. 
Will you get me Duran's number now? Hey, who do you think I am? I started looking for him as soon as you called me. He's waiting on the line, but he doesn't sound very enthusiastic. You're amazing. Let me speak to him, please. Well, what's going on? Is this some kind of a joke? You pulled me out of a lecture. You know how long I waited for this chance. Do you know that if things go well, this could be regular for me? Max, Ostankovich called. You've got to fly to Petersburg. Tell him I can come next Thursday. You don't understand. You must fly today as soon as possible. What? He's not kidding, Max. He's in a fix and he needs your help. If you don't go, he'll ruin you. You know he's capable of that. So I have to drop everything just because Astankovich has got himself a problem. We both know you don't have a choice. Come back to Leon. We'll meet at the park and talk it through. I'm sorry, but there's nothing else you can do. But I... Hurry up and get the next plane. From the airport, go directly to the park. We'll meet there. See you later. I'm glad you... One reason. Give me one good reason why I should come running like a dog every time you or Ostankovich calls. Max, we both know the reason. You can't afford not to obey him. I made one mistake. I've helped him many times. How long will this go on? You didn't just make a mistake, Max. You made a huge mistake. You forged paintings worth millions of dollars and sold them to get-rich-quick fund managers. And you got caught. Trying to sell a forgery to the Hermitage, that's plain madness. Look, I'm grateful to you for persuading Ostankovich to keep me out of jail, but I think I've made up for it. The case can be opened again any time and he's capable of doing that. Until the file is officially closed, you have no choice. I promise that if you help him one more time, I'll do my best to get you off the hook. There's been some trouble at the Hermitage. He probably needs an expert. Don't worry about your visa. You're traveling with special permission. Ostankovich has fixed it already. When it comes to manipulating the system, nobody matches my old commanding officer. Now that's always good to know. Have fun here. I'll be thinking about you. Take care. Caught between the west and the east, pulled by the leash of past sins, who holds your fate in their hands, Max? There's a shadow rising above you. It's good that you don't see it. For now. Back in the city upon the Neva. Can you see it flowing into the distance? It will never return once it passes a place. Just like you, Max. Pulled by a dark current, ending beyond the horizon. Hello. Please, have a seat. Colonel Ostenkovich has no time at the moment. I believe he is already waiting for me. So, you must be Mr. Durant then. I hope you had a pleasant journey. Not bad, but the one out of here will certainly be better. I see. Well, the colonel is expecting you. I expected you sooner. If I had a choice, I wouldn't be here at all. You see that file on the table? It's your criminal record. And it says that refusing to help me could have rather dramatic consequences for you. I've helped enough for you to close the case, haven't I? Listen, Durand, we all have nightmares. Yours is needing to help us. Mine is the reason for calling you. Help me get rid of mine, and I'll get rid of yours. Then we'll both be able to sleep soundly. So that's it? The file on the table is just a copy. Take it. If you help me, you can have the original, and I'll personally take care of the computer records. 
Well, I don't really have a choice, do I? Exactly. So now listen to me well. I won't waste time with threats. You already know what I can send you. This whole matter is top secret, so hold your tongue, got that? Sure. Last night the security system in the State Hermitage Museum stopped working for a time. Cameras, detectors, everything went blind. The external system worked, so we know nobody went in. You know how unlikely it is that everything on the inner circuit, including the backup sources, would fail? Next to impossible. Well, if something's happened there, an insider must have done it. A guard. Someone who hid himself in there. I'm certain that nobody took anything out. I was personally present during the preliminary investigation. Nothing's missing from the collection. So possibly it's an exchange. Why keep it secret? We can't go public with this. I am personally responsible for the collection. I chose the whole security system for the Hermitage. I chose the entire staff. Soon I am to receive an award for my service at the Hermitage. A medal, Durand, from the President. But if it came to light that one of them tried to steal something in the museum... I get that, but what do you want from me? On the table, there is a permit to go into the Hermitage. I now have it guarded even from outside by a guy with the same temperament as a bulldog. Remember to be nice to him to get inside. Then phone me. And what can I do there? Leave that to me. Just get into the museum and call me back. A pass to the Hermitage. I will certainly need that. Your end. Wouldn't you like to go now? Astankovich probably uses this to offer tea to his more important guests. Ah, the 1500. I've read about it. This tinny beast could be a hundred years old for all I know, but when the temperature hits minus 30, it's certainly the right car for the job. I don't think I need to call anyone in Petersburg. A permit issued by Ostankovich. Ostankovich lights his cigars with a lighter. What else can I say? I need to get inside. I don't care what you need. You mustn't go any further. It looks like the guard isn't very enthusiastic about his duty. He's obviously quite cold. He's holding an unlit cigarette. I can go in. I have a permit. Show it to me. Well, I doubt that I'm standing here all night long looking forward to smoking another one in the rain and cold so that the damned American could have a private nocturnal tour. I'm French. French, German, or American? <laughs> I don't give a damn. There's something strange about this permit. And nobody told me to let anybody inside. 
Look, I don't enjoy being here any more than you do, but unfortunately, just like you, I have no choice. We don't have to make life difficult for each other, do we? This permit was issued by your superior. I think you should do what it says. So, now you're telling me what to do. Like I said before, this permit is just a shred of drenched paper. And nobody told me to expect visitors. Unless somebody gives me different orders, it's too bad for you. Ostankovich, can't he leave me alone for a second? Are you there yet? I'm out front, but I've got a problem. The guard won't let me in. Of course he won't just let you in. Show him the permit. Use your brains. But I have shown... Oh, he hung up. Damn, what now? Would you like a light? I'm really sorry that you're stuck here, but if you think you're the only one Ostankovich jerks around, you're wrong. You can go home and sleep in the morning. I don't have it so easy. Let me inside. You know the permit is genuine. Okay, then. Just go. Eesh. What a life. I don't have a signal. Darkness everywhere. A storm outside. I can think of more pleasant places to spend the night. I'm curious what Ostankovich wants me to do here. To find out, I should call him. I don't think I want to open the window. It's raining outside and it will be locked. Well, at least I can get a strong enough signal here to make a phone call. Let's hope it doesn't fade. Here I am. Why did it take you so long? Don't try my patience, Tyrand. I have two jobs for you now. I don't trust the security system anymore. I've had the internal monitor switched off completely. My men are stationed outside the Hermitage, although they don't know why. Sad to say, you're the only person I can trust. I want you to go in tonight and take a very close look around at absolutely everything. So I am a security guard now. What am I supposed to do? Spend the whole night walking around, shining my flashlight at things, looking for intruders? Of course not. You wouldn't make much of a security guard, would you? Take a look around. Cast your expert eye over things. To be more precise, over everything. And you better do a good job. You've only got this one night. And that's going to take some explaining. You've dragged me all the way from France so I can walk through a museum all night long? Spare me your hysteria, Durand. Now for your second task. I need you to examine the precious items in the museum and try to find traces of tampering. Ensure they are not counterfeits. You sure you don't have a third job? Irrigate Africa before sunrise, Durand? You need labs and machinery for those sorts of tests. They can take days, weeks even. And you want me to look at dozens of paintings in the dark? And I'm only talking about the most expensive ones here, and tell you whether it's a forgery? 
You should have called a magician, not me. Yes, yes, I am sure there will be a few small difficulties. That's good reason to start right away. If you find something, call me immediately. Nobody's going to steal this, really. I'd bet my life on that. The rest of the corridor is closed off. According to what it says here, the exhibition will be open again in 14 days. Restoration work is in progress. Yes, I can see an empty wall at the end of the corridor. It's useless, no point to it. What the hell does he think I'll find here? It's high time I call Astankovich and tell him that this whole undertaking is absurd. What have you found? It seems a little soon for you to be calling. Look, I've gone through the exhibits, but without proper examination I have no way of finding anything out. The only thing that struck me is that closed corridor in the Hall of Peter the Great. What happened to the painting? The day before yesterday the frame of the painting was damaged. Fortunately, the canvas survived and the work is being restored. Probably a vandal. Could it be related to yesterday's system crash? Maybe it was a test to check how well the security system works. I must say it sounds intriguing. I'll definitely have it looked into. So, we can talk about this like reasonable people. And you'll forget about that idea. To be here. Durand? Hello, are you there? What's going on? Durand! Stop! Hey, stop! What was that? Someone's there. What? Somebody ran through here a moment ago and knocked down the barriers, but now he's gone. The corridor leads to the Hall of Peter the Great and doesn't go any further. That's really strange. The person must have disappeared there. Dragging a heavy metal post around the gallery doesn't strike me as a good idea. What's going on here? Someone ran by me a moment ago and I don't think he could walk through walls. I can't see much to examine here. There was a painting here? It's no longer here. It's simple. And it's too dark to see more details of the wall. This painting is being restored. There is a sign beside the barriers. A bit of light could help. The flame. There's a draft coming from the bottom of the wall. Sure, there must be a secret door in this wall. But how will it open? Something's telling me the gap at the bottom of the wall has something to do with opening the secret door. The gap under the door is too narrow. My fingers won't go through. I need something thinner. There's a gap here. Surely helps me to open the secret door.
Dragging a heavy metal post around the gallery doesn't strike me as a good idea. A strong piece of rope. Maybe I'll need it. I can't unscrew it, it's too tight. Now, where will the secret door lead to? The door closed itself automatically. If someone attacks me here, Ostankovic and his people won't ever find out. This would be the mechanism that opens the door from inside. Looks like it was fixed recently. Everything looks really run down and unsafe. Oh my goodness, that was close. I could have got killed. Now the door won't shut on me. I'm actually not sure what these rotten rags were supposed to insulate. Surprisingly, the rags are quite dry. I'll see if I can use them for something. I need to loosen this somehow. I need to loosen this somehow. I'd better take it again. It might be useful somewhere else. If I want to use it, I should have a closer look.
The pipes are all rusty. Hardly anything will flow through them. It won't matter if I take a piece of the bracket. Now the door won't shut on me. I'm not going into the dark. Who knows what the ladder's like? What if it suddenly ends in the dark before it reaches the bottom? A nice torch. It probably won't burn for long, but it should help to see what's down the ladder. At first glance, it looks safe down there, and the corridor goes further. Stay where you are. Don't come any closer. I mean it. Wasn't that loose ladder enough? Freeze. Step away from the painting, or I'll shoot. <laughs> that wasn't the best idea. Hey, police. Stay where you are. God, what am I trying to do? Still, maybe if I catch him, Ostankovich will be satisfied. Don't move. I've got a gun. I'm going to come over to you. No tricks, or I will use it. Stop! Don't move! Damn, I hope he's not armed. Leave the painting where it is. Max should have contacted me ages ago. He's been away for more than a day. Where are you, Max? Damn! Svetlova, SWOA. It's Pierre here. Please, Lara. Well, well. Look who's calling now. Maybe you should show up for work sometime. The analysis I did for you yesterday. Uh, that's what I want to talk about. Demer told the boss that I had you do it. Fortunately, it was an excellent job, so Charlotte was happy. She knows you did it. It will help your career one day. No, to je skvělé. Takže nakonec existuje něco jako karma. Udělej něco dobrého a ono se ti to vrátí. Vidíš, když už tě mám na drátě, taky bych něco potřebovala. Pracoval si chvíli ve státech, že? Dokázal bys sehnat nějaké podrobnosti o smrti profesora Abramčikova? Sure, why not? I still have some contacts. Why don't you claim it by yourself as an official Interpol request? No, it's not an official matter. I just have bad feeling. I knew him personally. Ah, uh, I'm sorry. I will check it out, of course. It may take a bit of time because I'm not in Lyon at the moment. Uh, by the way, that's exactly why I called you. I need again your help in the lab. Okay, looks like we have a deal. You will send me what you figured out on Abramchikov, and I will solve your little problem in the lab. What do you need? 
There's a new chromatograph in the lab. Charlotte wants to have an analysis of the forgery to get more information. Demer will do the analysis, but you have to calibrate the chromatograph. It shouldn't be a problem. Well, I think I'll manage with the handbook. Oh, alors, the manual is missing, but I'm sure you can handle this. The basic instructions are in the database. I have to run. Bye for now. Pierre. Pierre. Damn it. At least Pierre put some information on the chromatograph for me in the database. As far as I know Pierre, that should be helpful. Now, where's the chromatograph? Our new chromatograph. I hope it lasts longer than that wreck we had before. Warning. At the first calibration of the device, it is necessary to choose the calibration protocol 3. There's no reason for it to be turned off. Good. That's that done. Next time we should insist on the manual along with the machine. Ah, seems I should check my email inbox. It really looks like it was a tragic coincidence. Professor, you didn't deserve such an end. How many times did I tell you that those night walks would be the death of you?
Colonel Ostankovich is on the phone. Good morning, Colonel. Did you find anything? Lara, Max had an accident. I think you should know. An accident? What, what accident? Is he alright? He found some long-forgotten underground area in the Hermitage. He shouldn't have gone there at all. And what happened to him? He fell into the water there. We found him shortly after that happened. Oh my god. Is he alive? It would be best if you came here at once. Come to my office. I must go now. Ostankovich! Is he alive? What's the matter with him? Ostankovich! Oh my god! Ostankovich! I got on the first plane. What's the matter with him? Is he alive? He's in the intensive care unit. He hasn't woken up yet. Apparently, he was under the water for some time, and the doctors are afraid of potential brain damage from oxygen deprivation. Fortunately, the water was ice cold. That slowed down his vital functions. Perhaps if someone he knows was around, it might help us to wake him up. And how did it actually happen? He called me from the Hermitage. The call was cut off. Somehow he'd found a hidden door leading down to the Hermitage cellars, where the most precious works used to be hidden during the war. He went down there on his own and he fell into deep water. Good thing he had enough sense to wedge the secret door open. Otherwise, he would probably be dead now. It seems strange that he would just hang up to go to examine the cellars. That's not like Max. At the moment, there's nothing. Hang on. Ostenkovich. Yes, of course. Can he be moved? Good, thanks. The hospital? Yes, he's over the worst of it. He even came to his senses for a while. There doesn't seem to be any long-term damage. Now we need to get him somewhere peaceful and quiet. Thank God. We could take him to my old flat. When I'm in France, only my aunt lives there. That's not a bad idea. I'll arrange it. He's really lucky. If he hadn't gone to the Hermitage in the first place, he wouldn't need luck. You just won't stop, will you? If your attitude... Look, he's waking up. Where am I? What happened? Shh, don't tire yourself out. You're safe. Everything is all right. Am I in Petersburg? What are you doing here? You had an accident in the Hermitage. For a while it didn't look so good for you, so I had her come here. The Hermitage? I wanted to call you. Oh my god! That monk! There was a man there! He's delirious. He was all alone in the building. No! No, you don't understand. There was a man in monk's clothes, and he was taking a painting by Delaroche, the one that should hang in the gallery. I followed him, and he found the secret passage, but then he escaped. A monk? I should call the hospital and find out if these could be hallucinations or memory problems. Head trauma can cause that. He could hardly have hallucinated the secret passage, and as for the painting, Better check that there isn't a forgery hanging in your gallery. Of course, but I'll have to arrange it in a way that doesn't cause too much stir. In any case, I won't need you here any longer. You can go back to Leon. I'd rather stay with him, until he recovers more. Your concern for him is certainly touching. But your presence here could draw the attention of Interpol to what happened here. You don't have to worry about him. He's important to me. I'll look after him myself. Max. Max, what did we get ourselves into? Take care of yourself here. When you wake up, I'll be back in Leon. I will tell my aunt that you will stay here for a few days.
my old notebook, from back when I didn't use PDAs and other gadgets. I'd better let him sleep. My aunt never really recovered from Sergei's death. No wonder, she lost her only son. Perhaps that's why she refuses to let go of all that occult nonsense. When I was little, my aunt would put my hair in plaits in front of this mirror. I can still remember it. He looks a bit like Sergei, don't you think? Although he was a bit taller and had fair hair. Maybe a little bit. So you don't mind him staying here for a while? Of course not. You have feelings for him, don't you? I feel responsible for him. He's in this mess because of me. There's something strange about him. But I think you would make a nice couple. You think so? Max and me? No, it would never work, I'm sure. You are too transparent, my little girl. How on earth can you be a policewoman? You're the only one who takes me for a little girl these days. But let's stop this. You will look after him, won't you? And don't scare him, no cards. The cards were good for your grandma, your mama, and for me too. Perhaps you should change your mind about them, Laura. We've been through this before. Let's leave it for another day, shall we? I've got to go now. Take care. Take care, Max. Dreams. Windows into other worlds, into pleasant memories, into the darkest corners of the conscience. We don't choose dreams. They choose us. Are you finally up and about? You are always a world-class sleeper, but a whole day? That's impressive even by your standards. And I see you haven't lost your taste for childish humor. How did you get here, Andre? Lara called me. She said my big brother was on the verge of dying. So naturally I jumped on the first plane here. I was worried I might need to donate my blood or a kidney or something. But here you are, sleeping away. You shouldn't have come. I'm up to my neck in something scary. Still the overprotective older brother, eh? <laughs> I took time off and I'm staying here until you go home. I'm being forced into this by the cops. And you know why. I can't just leave. Well, that's another reason for me to stick around and keep you out of trouble. I'm staying and that's final. Now, how about getting some fresh air? It'll do you good. I had a terrible dream. Do you remember how you fell into the lake? It's a bad omen. To tell the truth, I've got better memories. And you can't scare me away with talk of bad omens either. Now, move it. We won't get anywhere by standing around chatting. And now it's one thing after the other. What do they want from me?
Well, it'll take a long time to explain. And do you have anything to drink here? I haven't had a drop since I landed. Damn it, Andre. How do you manage to make everything seem so banal? Make yourself at home, brother, and tell me everything. You're driving me crazy. Good. There were two break-ins in the Hermitage on two consecutive nights. On top of that, I was there at the time of the second break-in. Sure. And you finished off your party with the thieves with a nice cool bath. Lara told me all about it. Hmm. In any case, at the last moment I caught a glimpse of the stolen painting. The Christian Martyr by Paul de la Roche. That's a great clue. Now all you have to do is find out who would be interested in the work of art. That's just it. Hundreds of traffickers and collectors would be interested in such a painting. It's just too large a group of people. Hey, don't think like a policeman. After all, you sold paintings yourself. Think like a criminal. Are you going to hold that over me for the rest of my life? Wait, Andre, you are right. This could really lead us somewhere. I just need to find out who specializes in the 19th century. I still have the email address of an old contact, Malvin. He should be able to gather some interesting information. Exactly, because the seller will need an expert to assess the work. See, you'll figure it out yourself in the end. Let's get down to work now. Thanks. You really helped me. Please hold on a second. Let me write the mail to Malvin, and then I will come back to you. I have something else on my mind to talk about. Max, your cell phone is somewhere beneath the Hermitage, so take this one. I've saved two numbers on it, mine and Ostankovich's. Add the rest yourself, if you like. A can of green spray paint. Hmm. It hasn't been used for a long time. The nozzle is blocked up. Well, it might be useful for something. There's just some kitchenware in the cupboard. Well, Lara doesn't need it, and I could use it. Mm -hmm. 
Good morning. I'm Maxime Durand. Lara told me I could stay here for a while. Of course I welcome you to our humble abode. Tell me, do you believe in a higher power? In fate? No. I don't trust in such things. Not since a certain time. Oh, what happened to you? I don't like talking about it. Never mind. Uh, but since you don't believe in anything, you won't mind my telling your fortune from the cards? Well, why not? I'm your guest, so I won't decline. Great. Come closer then. Don't be afraid. Do you see? Greater Arcana. Your past, present, and future. All in 21 cards. The wisdom of the ages. Well, I should tell you up front that I don't really believe in such things. Ah, you say you don't believe, but I can sense your fear. You don't need to be ashamed. Very few can look at their fate without trembling. <laughs> It's all nonsense. Has anything that you ever predicted come true? I knew my son would die. I knew when and I knew how. I... I'm sorry. I didn't know. I didn't mean to. It's all in the past. What will you do? Are you going to take a card? The Hanged Man, number 12. Planet Neptune, the Hebrew letter Mem. The man hanging upside down is Odin. He sacrificed himself for knowledge, hung upside down for nine days, weak and hurt. And then illumination came. He understood the meaning of the runes that he was searching for. And what does that have to do with me? Illumination is awaiting you, knowledge. It will come at a cost. You'll have to pay for it, sooner or later. Just like he did, you'll pass a test. Take another card. Number six, Vav. The High Priest. He who stands on the borders of two worlds. Of this world, and the spiritual world to which he holds the key. He possesses a secret. But that's not you. It's someone you will meet. Someone new. Someone who knows the path. Next card. The world. The last 21st card. In the Kabbalah, it's called Tav. It symbolizes a perfect union, but also a transition. The end of one cycle and the beginning of the next one. The highest goal. The full circle. Well, this is not exactly specific, is it? Don't tell me you can't sense it. You're on a path that's going to change your whole life. And there's danger everywhere around you. Deadly danger. I don't need guards to know that. I felt it as soon as you stepped over the threshold. Maybe I should go now. One more card. I don't think this is a good idea. A card. Point to it. You won't even turn it over? Not even to see your own future there? Please, look at it yourself. I'm leaving. To be honest, I've got enough trouble of my own as it is, without you scaring me. Me turn it over? No, no, no. It's already been decided who will turn it over, and it's not me. The card stays where it is. 